and welcome back and I'm Draken and this is the Draken Gameworks and this is day two of the Invictus launch week. So throughout the entirety of uh, the whole Invictus launch period we are going to be having multiple different days which there are different manufacturers taking over the Bevic Convention Center and so for the second day we have Anvil Aerospace have taken over and so everything has changed down on the floor so we are back on the Skytram here down in Arc Corp just heading back into the Convention Center here and we're going to go and check it all out. So we're not going to explore all of the foyer here I thought I would just start with us coming in so I get to do my little bit of an intro before we actually dive into the center itself but um, yeah we will carry on this through the whole week so the hope is to be able to do every single day through the week we'll see how that gets at the end of the week um, it's a lot of work for me to do this is probably the most video editing that I've done for a long while So as you can see, everything has changed here on the floor. The vehicle floor has been completely taken out of the Bevic Convention Center, and this floor has been given over purely to Anvil Aerospace. And the first ship we're going to have a look at here quickly is the C8 Pisces. A lot of these are very quick to look at. They're not very big ships. Anvil builds a lot smaller fighter vessels. This one in particular is not so much of a fighter. It's more used for scouting, landing, that sort of stuff. And it's designed as a support craft that will fit in the hangar bays of ships like the Carrick and the uh, Jump 890 by Origin. Um, those sort of vessels will carry those sort of Things. Meanwhile, we've got this one over here. This we've already seen yesterday, but we saw the red version, and this was the F8. Um, this is the fighter that's coming from Squadron 42. Uh, pretty nice designer ship again. They got it on display, or they had it on display here uh, within the grey sort of scheme there. And then over on the other side, we have the F7A. So from my understanding, this is the military variant of the Hornet. Um, there is uh, the civilian versions, but the closest that normally civilians get to own is the F7CM, apparently the Super Hornet, which is apparently close to it. But this would be the military version that you might see flying around uh, the verse at different places. Once we've seen the Hornet, we come down into the central floor, and you'll see once we've hit the central floor itself, there is quite a few ships out here. They've sort of pushed back the barriers from where it was the day previously on day one, and we have quite a few more ships sitting down here. And the first ship to have a look at here is the Anvil Terrapin. This one does have a little bit of space inside of it. Um, this is mainly designed for scanning and exploration. It's not particularly powerful from its description, but it does have a lot of heavy shielding, has a lot of heavy armor, and it's more designed as uh, the sort of scanning exploration vessel. And it's a quite an interesting setup. You have these two seats here. You have one seat in the back here, which is obviously your scanner operator sits there, and then you go forward and you've got the pilot seat at the front there. There's not a lot more else to this ship to see on the inside, uh, so it doesn't seem like it's meant for long-term basis, just short scouting trips by, is what I would imagine this one would be used for. Moving on from that, we then come up to the Gladiator. This is the Anvil Gladiator. And one of the things I noticed is there's a very distinct look to a lot of Anvil ships. Their cockpits for a lot of their bombers and their uh, fighters all look fairly similar. The Gladiator here is a bomber. It can hold a crew or two. Uh, the civilian version is also meant to enable it so that you can choose between whether you have the bomb bay at the bottom or the cargo hold. Now, that does bring the question of why would a civilian ship have a bomb bay? I mean, I can understand why civilians might have fighter ships because you want to escort vessels around. You know, you're flying out your freighter and you've got going through pirate space, yeah, you want to have a fighter. But a bomber kind of suggests that you're going to be attacking a settlement, and you normally have that among civilians, I would imagine. But still, nevertheless. Um, this next one we got here is the Hawk. This is quite a unique, interesting little design in itself. It is designed as a light fighter. It's supposed to boast an impressive way of weaponry, uh, and Anvil consider this to be apparently a pretty good bounty hunting vessel as well. Though the one thing I'd recommend, it's got this really cool way of actually entering the ship by the actual uh, seat coming right down from underneath there and then you jump in and pull it back up though as I realized when I was doing this I then got myself stuck in here because apparently on the display model there was no point to actually exit the ship back out in the cockpit so I got stuck and had to reboot my game but it's got quite this interesting design though it's got the front nose looking very much like an anvil ship you can see this sort of extended back bit, which almost looks a bit like a pterodactyl rather than a hawk, um, like the old dinosaur flying dinosaurs and stuff. A bit of an interesting design on the ship there. This one here, this is the Hurricane, uh, and other than sharing a name with an old World War II British plane, this kind of looks very much, uh, I would say, looks like it's had sort of a, it's the illegitimate love child of Anvil's ships and Origin's ships, because the way these wings are designed at the end here, they remind me very much of the Origin uh, 300i series in the way the wings are shaped there, but apparently this is uh, going to be a two-man fighter, which 
both some, an impressive way of weaponry there. You can see some of the missiles tucked in there, and there's a turret on the top there as well with a few more weapons and a bunch more cannons at the front there. So this is going to be a heavy. That's a heavy fighter design. And then on the other side here, as we go to the other side of the hall, we've got another example of a Hornet. This is just the standard F7. I imagine this is the civilian version that was on show. Didn't quite catch which version it was when I was actually going around looking at it. Um, I actually have flown one of these a couple of times myself. Uh, I had one that was on my account for a while when I first uh, started off with my free fly trials and everything else like that. To be perfectly honest, it's not um, my favourite ship amongst the whole lot there, to be honest. Uh, as a fighter, I wasn't that impressed. I don't get on with it too well, but that's just me. And uh, Maybe it's just not the fighter for me, and maybe I should be looking for a different fighter. Talking about other fighters, we got here the Anvil Arrow. Now, if you listen to a lot of the chat channels and everything else on Star Citizen, a lot of people will tell you this is probably one of the best fighters in the game. Uh, it is a very light fighter. Uh, you can see it's not a particularly big ship. Um, that doesn't mean it has a lot of weapons and it doesn't have a lot in ways of things like shielding, but because it's a light fighter, it's incredibly fast and it's incredibly maneuverable, which is why I think a lot of people love this ship so much. Um, then coming on from there, we come over to we come to the first of the two ships that I really started to really start to fall in love with the Anvil stuff. The first one here is the Anvil Valkyrie. This is a ship that actually I wouldn't mind flying myself, actually, if I was to do something like Theatres of War. This is the kind of thing I would want to be actually flying. And this is a transport ship, and I can see myself enjoying myself doing a mission, flying around on these transport ships, dropping troops and cargo off. The back of this area reminds me a little bit of a Hercules uh, cargo plane, like the modern Hercules cargo plane, rather than the Hercules that's in the game that's also a transport spaceship or will be coming to the game um, but that back area has that kind of a reminder of it and then we've got these side doors here and you might have just seen as we were coming around there there's also like a little cannon that was tacked to the side there that you can pull out um, and then you've got basically side gunners could be operating from the side here so the back area here is designed for carrying vehicles that you can drop into a battleground and then you have the side areas here and as the doors open I love that door opening mechanism but as we come down the side here you've got 10 seats on either side of here so you've got 10 on this pod and there's 10 on the other pod there where you can carry a large amount of troops into battle so you've got about 20 odd troops that you can just sit inside of here alone and then we come through to here and this is the bottom turret that we're looking at here and then as we get to the other side there you'll be able to also see that there is the other 10 pods there on the side there or the other 10 seats for uh, more soldiers to be kept on there there is also an upstairs section, so between the two entrances for those uh, troop pods, you've got this ladder that comes up to here. And I'm guessing this is the crew deck, this is where the crew would normally stay. You've got uh, various beds up here. Uh, imagine the one on its own is probably the captain's bed, and then there's a few others. This seat is going to lead to the top turret. But the one thing I notice here, we've got these handrails here. It's very open there from the beds out into the actual back cargo bay. So. If ever there was a depressurization event, you know, you're in space and your cargo bay got depressurized and everything else, anyone who was sleeping in bed at the time is going to get sucked out into space. It's not, I think, uh, hasn't got the most uh, fail-safe uh, backups on there for uh, in, in the event of any sort of problems there. So I wouldn't be comfortable sleeping in that area myself, personally, if I was on this ship. But coming through then... Uh, from the crew area we come through here we've got another two crew stations here I guess in the sort of there to assist the main front pilot who would be actually way out the front here that's extended at this little pod at the front here so he's probably got a bit more visibility by being pushed this far forward overall this is so far up uh, until we hit the next ship this was my favorite ship that I discovered so far in here as I said if we we're doing theaters of war I would absolutely adore flying one of these bringing troops in and out from battlefield and everything else that would be my forte you know running around FPS isn't so much my thing flying something like this taking other troops into the position and helping people in that supporting role that's the kind of thing i like and that's what i like about star Citizen as well it's got these kind of things where you can do all these different types of roles and you can find people to slot in where they want to but i quite like that overall as a ship but now we come to the centerpiece for anvil aerospace and what is going to probably take up a lot of time on this video today and that is of course this the Carrack. The Carrack is uh, possibly the largest ship. I think it's the largest ship. I'm pretty sure it's uh, it's larger than the 890 Jump. Um, but it is a long-range exploration military vessel. It's basically a capital vessel. It has four decks on here. We've got a number of cargo uh, pods situated in the end. I think you can just see them here actually as we're looking at them. Um, this is a huge, huge vessel. And for me, I had not actually, this has only just been released, the Carrick. It's not been out for long. It's only been about a month or two, I think, that the Carrick's been out. If I remember rightly, at the beginning of 3.9, I believe they released it. Um, and I haven't had a chance yet until I got to do this filming to actually see the Carrack myself. So this is the first time I've got to see the Carrack in the flesh and in the person. Now, first impressions from the outside, I wasn't too impressed with the style and design of the ship on the outside. I mean, when I've seen the pictures of it before, not been that impressed. But as you'll see, my opinion of it actually changed as we went through. 
So we got this, it's the front loading bay, so we've got space here for uh, a vehicle to be parked, and you've even got a ramp there. The ramp there is to stop any vehicles sort of going too far forward and into these sort of doors here. And then going beyond the actual small vehicle bay at the front, we then have uh, a couple more doors back here leading to a docking collar. Now these bits on the side, at first they look like they might be escape pods, really fancy escape pods if that was, but I've, I think this is meant to be where they're going to end up putting some suits in there, you might have like battle armour in there, or you might have some exploration armour. So you've got some thicker armours all being stored there. This is meant to be an exploration ship, so you're probably going to be wanting a variety of different suits, especially in that survival mechanic to come in where you have to have the right suit for the right environment, you know, if it's hot then you need a suit that's going to cool you down, if it's too cold you're going to need a suit that's going to keep you warm. Um, from there, we then progressed into here, which we got one of three cargo bays here. Really like these sort of cargo bays. You have these catwalks going across in the middle. Reminds me a little bit of the Caterpillar with the catwalks going across the cargo bays in there. But uh, I love the way it comes across the middle here. And then all of them have this lift here that will then take you straight down into the cargo pod itself. And loads of space there for storing stuff. And so hopefully, you know, you know, I can imagine there's all sorts of things people could do with these cargo pods. You could probably hide stub fighters in there if you wanted to, if you didn't want to be carrying cargo. Um, though I imagine there's plenty of use for you putting cargo in there as well. And one of the other things I love is that as we go through these doors, you can see it's got like this docking collar between each of the pods there. So I imagine these pods are designed to actually detach. You get like two doors opening at the same time, like a proper airlock mechanism on there, which is great failsafe. We were talking about in the last ship that it wasn't much of a failsafe. This one seems to have a lot more of them. Um, we come around to the back here, you've got like hidden, hidden weapons lockers there, and we've got more of these places for where I believe suits are going to be stored there and you'll see why I think these are suit storage and not uh, escape pods later on in here but you've also got this elevator here there are a couple of elevators um, all the way through the ship some just move between two decks some move between all four decks that's one of the main lifts at the back though and then we have the rear turret at the back of the carrack here itself so this is the bottom floor that we've just looked at but if we go back to the lift and we can see there are a couple of decks there and we can go up now one level to the habitation deck if i actually select the correct one there i just click the sub deck which is the bottom one we are up to the habitation deck and i love this lift here as well it's all very open um which i don't know maybe that's a little bit of a fault on the ship that is completely open and maybe you want it a little bit more sealed up because you know in case there's a breach in the side of the hull or something like this. But we're up to the habitation deck, and the atmosphere on the habitation deck is completely different to um, what we've just seen on the sub deck. So the sub deck is all business, it's all that sort of industrial style feel. And then we come up to the habitation deck, and it's much brighter. And this here is the med bay, and this is an awesome looking medical bay, this is an awesome looking sick bay. And this is the point where I started to fall in love with the Carrick a bit. So it's not the outside of the ship and the way it looks on the outside that really struck me, it was what was the inside and the potential of the ship. Because all these sort of little spaces, I mean, look at the amount of detail that's gone into. This is like a medical storage room. It's full of medicines and boxes of various bits and pieces. But it's got so much sort of potential for that sort of role play perspective as well. So you think things like uh, you have shows out there like The Expanse and Dark Matter and Firefly and all the other various space shows that you can think of out there where people are flying around on a ship which has got multiple rooms and all that sort of stuff. And th this has that. It has all those sort of style rooms. So we have here this huge medical bay with places where you can go and get scanned and sorted out for your illnesses and a doctor's office and everything else like that and this is where I started realizing that this is what this ship has the potential for is that kind of thing where you have multiple people all working on the same ship with different roles interacting in that different way in that sort of in that way um we come off to the side here and you can drop into here and we've got one of our crew quarters and we've gone through talking about all of those sort of shows uh, and we've got this uh, lovely pool table here i love the shape on that pool table i would love to have a game of pool on that table though they all the balls there look silver so i'm not sure how you would tell which is your balls and which is your opponent's balls never know maybe one day they'll actually make a mini game out of that and you'll be able to actually play it for real on the uh, on the ship that would be nice uh, though i noticed there was an ashtray there as well so that's something yeah allowing smoking on board the ship i'm not sure that would be uh, so approved but Coming in here, and I started to suddenly get vibes from Alien, uh, you know, the old film series and everything else, the ships in there, uh, the way that the bunks are designed in here, and the way that they actually it's shaped, and even just the lighting and the coloration around here. Uh, we obviously got uh, our shower room here as well, um, and it just gave me that sort of alien vibe of those sort of ships. Notes here as well, no reflection. We Everyone here is vampires in the, the, the verse here, apparently. None of us give reflections in the mirror. Uh, I don't know if that will ever get fixed, but uh, it would be pretty cool if you can see your own reflection when you go past those things. Um, going across the corridor from where we were, and then you've got 
your little dining area here and again i'm getting alien vibes from this it feels like aliens but it's that thing that you can imagine the crew just sitting around discussing their latest exploration mission while sitting around that table i love that potential that it's giving there and then we come through to what is the captain's ready room essentially so we have the captain's office in here uh and then from to the side there we also have where his quarters would be so you've got the uh a single bed over there with uh, obviously his little duffel bag at the side and then we've got his bathroom in the back there as well uh, all sort of private for the captain so the captain gets his own thing you can tell it's a big ship because the captain gets his own series of rooms uh, separate to the rest of the crew i did notice it does get the idea of closed and open mixed up here so yeah it's turning we click and open and it closes it and we click close and it opens it's a bit weird but i do like that there's all these little things around here like this for example we've got the option to click close on that and you can see it just slides in in that sort of practical way that you almost like like, um, you ever see like modern RVs and all that sort of stuff that are out there and uh, I've seen a few videos where uh, they sort of take these RVs and they do them up and make them all look nice and they always got these like screens that fold in and out of the uh, the sort of shelves and everything else like that and it reminds me a bit of that and hopefully one day those screens will get uh, a little bit more activity now coming through here to the bridge now the, the first bit about the bridge that strike, struck me as soon as I walked in here was this reminded me very much of uh, the constellations we looked at uh, on day one um, it's got the free seats sat at the front there and it was like well that doesn't really massively impress me these free seats and everything else and then I remembered that the Carrack actually has two levels to the bridge so this is only the bottom level so this is where some of the crew would be operating and sitting co-pilot and pilot and so forth but if we go to the back there is a lift this is one of those lifts that only operates between two floors and it's the two floors of the bridge and if we click on going up to the bridge itself we can go and have a look at the upper story of the bridge and this is where again I suddenly got a bit more impressed with the bridge. The bottom part I wasn't that impressed with because it just didn't look that different to the constellations. But coming up here, you now got two more crew stations at the back here for like, I'd imagine for operating sensors or something like that. And then we also have this planning bay just sat here, uh, obviously being able to scan in a three dimensional sphere around the local space. I think that's pretty cool. But this I love. And this is the command station. This is where your captain would normally stand. Uh, and it's a standing uh, position as well. I like it's a standing console. And I'm being a fan of standing consoles myself, or oh, standing computers, I love that idea. But that commanding position, the view you get out the top there, is absolutely awesome. Coming down to here, then, we've got these escape pods. This is why I know those other things aren't escape pods, because we actually do have escape pods on the ship, and they're marked up clearly as escape pods and look a lot more heavy duty than those other things. So I do believe those other things are actually just for the storage of suits. Um, but we come along to here, and when we come into what is going to be, I believe, the drone bays. So they're going to have the options for drones. I'm not quite sure what the drones are going to be doing, whether they're going to be just for repairs, whether you can use it for scouting or for defense or anything else like that. It would be pretty cool if it could all be all those sort of things together. But you have these stations on either side here that, uh, where the drone operators sit I imagine you what you do is you jump into the seat there and you'll put you in control of a drone or two that you've got out in uh, space there you maybe you have options or something like that um, the drone mechanics haven't come into the game as yet again that's a future pending mechanic there's so many mechanics in this game that are still pending on there's loads already in the game I mean let's just be straight here and honest there is loads in the game but there is loads to come as well all the things they want there is still a lot more to be developed and everything is still always a continuous progression and development as we go through and we come through to the other side here this is the other side of the drone bays so I believe this is where we have like a workbench here for working on the drones um, and then to the right here as we come around and have a look here this would be the airlock where the drones get in and out of the ship itself so they have their own small little separate airlock uh, which I think is quite cool it looks very industrial looking there as well um, we come back to here and then we get to this is the view out onto the hangar which we'll have a look at properly in a second but we also just have off to the left here we have the service ladder so this runs also as well as the elevators that go up and down the ship there are also tucked away behind a couple of doors ladders that run the entire length of the ship as well um, so you've got these little back areas where you can climb up without using the elevator so should you lose power and the elevators stop working you still can get between decks uh, it's not a problem but we come to this bit here which is the hangar so this like the 890 jump has its own uh, internal uh, hangar at the top there which enables it to keep a small ship on board so this could keep uh, for example we saw earlier on the C8 uh, Pisces uh, was a, a good example of a stub ship that could be stored in here and sits perfectly in here in fact it, its function and role is perfect for sitting here in the carry and you'd have doors that would come over the top here as well which would enable it to seal it in when the ship's in transfer um, it seems like a previous ship has actually left a part 
of itself here. <laughs> a bit of a weird bug in there, but there's a part of a, it looks like a cannon or something that's just left floating in the air there. Not sure what's how that came about. Um, but yeah, this is obviously up on the third deck here. And yet you could seal your ships away quite easily into here and, you know, blast them out as you need be, whether you need something that's just a quick landing ship rather than bringing the whole large vessel down to land or whether you just need to transport some goods off, um, shuttle people around. It, it's kind of got that functionality to it. Um, we come around to the back here then and we are starting to enter into uh, well, towards the engineering section. This isn't the engineering section though. This is going to be the side turrets. Um, so where you look at the back where you have those big side wings that sort of rotate when it takes off and lands, the at the end of them is these turrets and we're walking through the sort of the connecting struts for that wing and this brings us out to the side ball turrets on either side of there. Uh, and then when we go back a bit further from there we end up here which is into the engineering section. So we have this sort of engineering station here that overlooks the engines that we can see at the back there. You can see both engines on either side. Um, I'm not sure quite what that hatch is down there, whether that's just a bit of decoration or something like that. It just seemed a bit out of place a little bit um, but then if we come around to the back here we can go through to the engines itself and again like the bridge at the front this is built across two decks so there is an elevator that goes up and down between here what's um, interesting about this is that you can only get into the engine room or from what I discovered on this level so there are two doors on this level on either side uh, of that engineering station we were just at that brings you into here and then there's a lift just behind where we are now and then at the other end we'll see us go down a ladder in a second and that will take us down to the bottom deck um, but this bottom deck can't be accessed through anything but this ladder and that elevator. I couldn't find any other sort of access route that would actually bring you through to this. So this seems to be actually sealed off from the habitation jet deck, uh, which is on the same level as we are now as we walk around here between the engines at the bottom side of it. Um, but I can imagine it could be quite a bit of fun running around here, repairing stuff up. But we have these two little side rooms here. So these side doors, they seem to lead to, um, as well as this elevator here that's going to take us back up if we want to use it. But those two side rooms, um, they seem to lead to like fuel tanks and stuff like that. So doesn't seem to be much function and maybe a few bits of equipment and stuff like that so you probably come in here to do some repairs but uh, it doesn't actually give access to the rest of the ship so it's a bit of a an unusual design in the back there um which i would have thought there might have been some connection through to the other deck there maybe even just a hidden door or a crawl tube or something like that would have been pretty cool but still it is, it's a pretty cool ship anyway in itself and we're going up to the very top deck now this is the final deck and at the back of the ship, you can see straight ahead there, uh, if we go through to here, is going to be like a cartography room. So this is the cartography deck. So at the moment, it doesn't have any functionality. It just has the same hologram on there. But I can imagine having this Mass Effect style idea, you know, like in Mass Effect where you had the big... Uh, galaxy map and you go and stand in front of it uh, in there this is going to be pretty similar to that and where you'd be like mapping out new planets and asteroids and new claims and all this sort of stuff you could go to there to actually do all your mapping out uh, and just analyze it there this is after all meant to be an exploration ship it is I know it's uh, Invictus Fleet Week and it's meant to be all about the military this is a military exploration vessel so it's, uh, that's why it's included in it this week um, whereas if you look at some of the other exploration vessels they're a little bit more luxurious uh, designed more for the civilian market this is, tends to be more of a militant crew I'd imagine I'm meant to be using this um, and then we come through to the final bit inside the ship itself which is this airlock that sits up on the top deck here and it has two doors leading into the airlock and two doors leading out of the airlock and these doors will lead out to just above the hangar itself um, where you would normally put something like your escape Pisces or whatever stub fighter you might want to put in here which is going to give you complete access to the top of the ship so when I first saw the Carrack uh, and the designs of it which I mean I started probably playing Star Citizen a few months ago and I heard everyone was getting excited about this Carrack and I saw the designs and I wasn't heavily impressed I mean my impression originally of the Carrack was very similar to if you saw my previous video on day one that I put up um, where I was saying about the Polaris where it felt like the ship was quite bulky and then the bridge looked quite small in comparison I had a similar sort of feeling not to quite the same degree but a similar sort of feeling to the Carrack um, but getting into the Carrack and exploring it I just fall in love with this vessel just because of just all the interior elements that are built inside of there um, but this has been uh, the second day of the Invictus Fleet Week there is no other floor horror corridors here so this is the only floor uh, that is available in the uh, convention center for it on this day and we will be back again soon where we will do day three with the next load of ships as well in the meanwhile I hope you all take care be safe and we'll catch you again soon take it easy <laughs>